distanza to our, uh, oops, let's uh, on the wrong side, say from here and here. You have to make even number of transitions in order to return here. But because a uh, page rank graph is fully, is complete, uh, there is a path of any line, uh, right? So clearly not all paths are divisible by a fixed number. Yes? So the fixed number uh, has to be arbitrary. Yeah, it can be an arbitrary. So <coughs> it's a periodic if there is not, if there is, it doesn't, so if there isn't a natural number k and a state so that every loop uh, that goes back to that state is divisible by k. And lo and behold, uh, the main theorem uh, says that uh, uh, every um, irreducible aperiodic uh, Markov chain uh, has a unique Uh, stationary distribution distribution by such that pi times is equal to pi times g. But these are remember these are raw vectors. I just I'm too lazy to put transposes, but. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, here vectors are rods. Okay, so and that's precisely our requirement, our modified page rank matrix G3, right? Was uh, such that it defined clearly, trivially, an irreducible and a periodic Markov chain, and thus it has a unique property, a unique pro uh, probability distribution to satisfy these. And moreover, such pi is equal to the limit uh, q0 times g to the n when n goes to infinity for every, for, uh, for arbitrary g0. Sorry, q0. So no matter, maybe you, you'll define your uh, random surfer as follows. Uh, it always starts from the Google web page. Uh, what would be the probability distribution Q0 in this case? Uh, zeros everywhere and one at Google web page. Nevertheless, the, the eventually the process will converge uh, to a distribution pi for as long as maybe different pages will produce a, a different rate of convergence, but the net effect will be always the very same probability distribution, and this is the page rank. Okay. okay. Now. Uh, so how does Google compute the page rank? Of course, we don't take matrix to the power n. Uh, we simply start with q0, right? And then uh, you multiply it with g. Then you multiply the result with g, and so forth. So always you do only vector matrix multiplication. This will be a vector, you multiply with G another vector, and in this way, and uh, instead of taking the limit, uh, uh, page rank pi is approximately equal to Q0 times G to the power between 50 to 100. Uh, if uh, this factor alpha is uh, 0.85. <coughs> 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 
it's possible actually to uh, uh, to compute exactly the rate of convergence. The rate of convergence is approximately alpha to the n. So alpha, if it's 0 0.85 to a power 100, this becomes sufficiently small uh, so that the change between two consecutive iteration, iterations will be smaller than uh, this number. And it used to take about a week in early days uh, uh, to, uh, to compute the page rank. Uh, nowadays, uh, I think they update it more frequently. But of course, the algorithm, you know, people find of clever ways to skew the algorithm with this, what's called, uh, what they call farm links. Uh, uh, so, sorry? Yeah, they do kind of all sorts of dodgy things, and then they try to sue Google when Google just uh, drops their uh, web pages from PageRank. But uh, Google wins uh, the, uh, the lawsuit mostly because it has an unlimited capital to invest in nasty lawyers. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but. Uh, uh, you know, Google is a service. If you don't like it, you don't use it, right? And it's uh, uh, they are free. They are free to. It's like a freedom of speech for a corporation because in America, corporations have the same legal status as living people, right? Interestingly enough, and this is supposed to be extremely good uh, kind of uh, because then Google, then corporations also have, uh, you know. Uh, uh, right of free speech and whatnot. Okay, uh, now, um, yes? Would it be possible to like, compute page rank from like, a previous instance of page rank? Ah, that's a very good question. Answer to this question, what would you do? That's a very good question. So the question is, if, you're, if you want to recompute the page rank, uh, how would you do it to somehow make use of the previously computed page rank? What would you do? You use the previous one for starting. Exactly. Uh, only the new web pages or deleted web pages will be uh, altered. The new web page will get some, um, uh, probably, maybe the mean of all page ranks uh, of all the web pages. <coughs> and then you use it as a starting point. <coughs> oh, excuse me, with the, because probably in all likelihood, because the page rank is relatively robust, it doesn't change very quickly. It would converge much faster than if you did it really with uniform say distribution. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, how would you assign probability to the new web pages if you were to use? Okay, that's a very good question. How do we do that? How do we do, okay, <coughs> this is, uh, in fact, uh, when you, for example, do, uh, when you want to aggregate the reviews of customers of a product, right? And there is a product that only one person reviewed and gave it five stars. Would you put this as, uh, the, as its rank? No, because if it's only one review, who knows who wrote that review, right? Maybe the owner of the company. So what you do is you use what's called Bayesian approach, uh, which is essentially you start with, uh, uh, you give it the Average, uh, average ranking of all the products that you have in your database. So for page rank, you would simply compute the mean. What is the mean of, uh, of uh, the page rank? All the rows divided by n, so you would get 1 over n. 
if you use that. But uh, so um, in general, how you do it, you do you really take the mean, and then uh, in the next step you make a linear combination of the previous mark and the new mark, which is essentially like uh, a low pass filter. RC low pass filter, a single capacitor and single resistor. Uh, so, to be honest, I don't know what Google does. Uh, how they probably, I my guess would be that they start with 1 over n and uh, then the, probably because all other page ranks are well defined, it will very quickly converge even for that value. My guess would be, yeah. Uh, but there is another problem with uh, page rank. Uh, all the links out of a web page are weighed with the same num number, one over number of outgoing links. What do you think is that reasonable? I mean, on a web page, you can have a link to a legal disclaimer. No one really goes there to read uh, about all the ways they can screw us up, right? <laughs> so. Uh, how would you then weigh, uh, uh, what would be the probabilities of transitions uh, for each of the, of the links? How would you do it? Uh, are all links on a web page equally important? Uh, track what people Sorry? Track what people Brilliant. So there was, first people thought that links that are towards the top of the web page, uh, should get higher weight. But then Google got clever and made the Chrome browser. <laughs> and whenever you click a link in Chrome, it sends to Google <coughs> information that you clicked on that link. Now you can have a much better weighing. You simply assign a weight to each link, the fraction of clicks from that page. And because of this browser uh, spying feature, um, of course, you know, Google didn't uh, construct uh, Chrome just to give us a good, fast browser. constructed <laughs> it to harvest information so that they can bombard us uh, with, uh, ads. with ads. What you know, if you use cognitive modes? Sorry? What if you use cognitive modes? Uh, well, uh, probably, but I don't think most of people bother to do that. Uh, really? Oh, so I'm kind of out of uh, date on this. Uh, uh, you know, majority of people actually simply uh, simply use the software. People are inherently lazy, so. Um, uh, it's worked so far for Google. I don't know when they have other means as well. But uh, <coughs> so this is providing that we can get uh, statistics of the clicks. This is easy to fix, right? By skipping the statistics about. So in their database, rather than just web pages, they have to keep uh, also all the links uh, to produce the appropriate way. So that solves one problem. But the other problem is also this. Uh, our a random surfer, once he gets bored, right, he chooses a random web page. Uh, well, assume that he was surfing the web going to the sport results. Uh, is he then equally <laughs> likely to click on an arbitrary web page or maybe he is likely to click on an arbitrary sports <coughs> web page. So you see, the idea is, <coughs> even though uh, humans mostly behave as a flock of sheep, right? They do exhibit some non-uniformity in their behavior, right? Uh, usually, people have internet. And they, of course, are much more likely to go to the web pages of that interest. So one can then think, <coughs> why not make personalized web pages? 
I mean, personalized ranks. What do you think? What's the problem if Google would keep a tally of your clicks? Why shouldn't Google uh, provide for each user, for example, for the same IP, it would provide uh, a personalized page rank? Hmm? That would be computationally intractable because they would have to run page rank as many times as there are users. They use, but they cannot use it to compute the page rank for every single person because computing page rank, it's a, it's a hundred multiplications. But this guy is probably close to a trillion by trillion, <laughs> right? That's very expensive computation. So what do we do as engineers? Well, <coughs> we cannot produce the best solution, but we produce a good enough solution. And lo and behold, relatively early in Google's history, there was another Stanford student uh, a startup called Caltix uh, that did the following. Yeah. They started just with 16 categories uh, of what you would call interests. Uh, so what would that, would that be? It would be news, sports, science, law, business. And they started with only 16, uh, right? Now, for each web page, uh, right, they can classify it uh, whether it uh, fits this interest or not. For example, if you say, if you Google search for, say, uh, Google share price, uh, then this would be in the category of business and maybe category of technology. So then you can have a 16 page ranks, each computed. Uh, if you remember the formula, instead of having 1 over n everywhere, you would maybe have 1 over 100 n on those uh, some factor. Uh, very small factor everywhere and the larger factor on the web page that fits to that category. Uh, and uh, they produce altogether 16 page ranks. Then when, yes? How did they initially find out which page is actually important? So it's simply they do it, <coughs> they classify the keywords. Uh, I guess probably, uh, actually, I think they even use some machine learning trick how to classify uh, the, uh, the keywords. So, but it's, if you have 16 categories, they would run only 16 times the page run. Uh, that's still tolerable, right? Um, now, the trick is uh, when you do a search, uh, right? The system tries to guess in what category this is and to what degree. For example, Google share price would be probably 75% uh, in category business and 25% in category technology. Then what they would do, they would find a linear combination of the two page ranks uh, in which the business rank is uh, uh, weighed 75.75 and technology rank is weighed 0.25 and this is the page rank that Google will use. Uh, so notice this is a very simple computation because you only find uh, uh, you know weighted average of uh, 16 entities, right? Um, and uh, lo and behold, apparently this improved the uh, uh, quality of the returns, Google, uh, Google returns. And uh, Caltex was bought uh, essentially just, I think, a couple of months after they, uh, they started, right? 
So guys, if you want to escape uh, grind, how do you call the wheel that, uh, right? The rat race, yeah, that's a good term. Do a startup, yes. The pace ranks now depend on the query. Yes, exactly. 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 If we do it that way, how how could that do pace rank add to one? Like all the pace rank. Okay, because we make always convex combination. So you you know that the sum total of each page rank is one. If the coefficients also add up to one, then linear the convex combinations will also add up to one, just for the same reason as uh, what we had, uh, you remember we had uh, uh, alpha over uh, number of outgoing links plus one minus alpha divided by n, and this is a convex combination, the coefficients add up to one. So whenever the coefficients add up to one, and by the way, this is also the reason why this stays a probability distribution, because this matrix is what's called the raw stochastic, which means that each raw sums up to one. And for that reason, it's easy to see that uh, this vector, no matter how many iterations you do, the product vector also sums up to one. So for as long as you make what's called convex combination, so linear combination with the weights summing up to one, you are in good shape. Uh, yes. Okay, any other questions? Uh, yes? Uh, it seems that the pi is the eigenvector of the transformation of G. Isn't it kind of a nice integration? Uh, since the eigenvalue is one, is it kind of a rotating kind of axis of the pi? It is. Uh, one can see it, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in, uh, the, in terms of this is essentially the principal component uh, of the matrix. So there are all sorts of, uh, yeah, you can make geometric interpretation of, uh, of it. Uh, what about the conversion? Is it kind of a graphical meaningful integration of the conversion? The sub is saying again? Uh, the conversion of the page rank. Is it kind of a graphically nice integration? Uh, I haven't thought about that. I wouldn't know. Here is a top, uh, the topic for your project. Because in machine learning, if you use MATLAB, mm -hmm. um, there's a, it's kind of a, a local bit and a global bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably I haven't. You know, the problem with this is that these are gigantic objects. Uh, so visualizing anything, uh, uh, it's kind of challenging. Uh, yes? Um, so they, did they come up with this mat and then use that to come up with the page rank algorithm or the other way around? No, I, okay, that's a very good question. What they did have. Uh, they did have the idea of the random surface. And initially, they just used the, the raw probabilities without the trips, right? And they ran the page rank and they noticed uh, that all page ranks were going to zero except for a few pages. Then they looked at what these pages are, and these pages are what do you think? What are they? They are the dangling nodes, because dangling nodes keep sucking in the page rank and not giving out anything. So then they came up with the idea, and probably uh, uh, their teachers, Motfani and Vinograd, uh, gave them advice about that because they were listed on the patent, I think, and uh, yeah, they were listed on the patent. But the original paper actually has a mistake, so obviously they were foggy about math. But they did have, a, they did know of stationary distribution of Markov chains. But of course, the mathematics behind this was they had a good gut feeling and hit the right theorem to use, but probably had no clue exactly uh, about the, uh, you know, uh, theory of. Uh, well, they should have. They, they they took a probability course at Stanford in computer science. So probably, yeah, it, that's hard to tell. But definitely, they did uh, have the intuition about uh, uh, this random box walk on graph, and probably uh, Motvani gave them um, uh, 
uh, gave the hint how to clean it up. Um, so, uh, and you know, to do, in fact, my students who apply this, for example, for computer security, you can find the paper on the web page. None of them was a mathematician, but uh, <clears throat> you absorb the intuition behind and how you formalize it. And then, uh, if you are too busy to learn the mathematical details, you can use it more or less as a black box, right? But what's important and what I emphasize here uh, is to have the proper intuition and to know when your, the theorem is applicable so that you know what you can do and what you cannot do because it's easy to make uh, mistakes. But uh, and you will see other algorithms that we are going to do uh, that have, you know, maybe difficult proof of convergence, uh, but uh, um, the intuition is uh, very kind of clear and allows you to design new algorithms uh, as my students did, which I'll show you when we come to that point. Now, this is a very important special case of what's called fixed point. A fixed point for a function f is the value x0 such that when you apply f to x0, you get back x0. And there are important mathematical theorems when such fixed points exist. For example, when f is a contraction, which may satisfies Lifshitz's condition that uh, uh, f of x minus f of y is smaller than some factor q times absolute value of x minus y. Right, when q is a fixed number strictly smaller than 1. This is called Lifshitz condition and it's enough to guarantee the existence of a point that satisfies f of x0 equals x0. In, this is a particularly simple case because in this case the function f is linear, right, it's just a product of a vector and a matrix. So it's a linear, right? I have the property that x plus y times g is equal to x times g plus y times g. That's uh, one of the two conditions for linearity, right? In general, f will not be linear, and we will encounter uh, such example when we do the uh, voting uh, algorithms, uh, uh, right? Uh, but this is uh, and, uh, several of the uh, algorithms from the book, in fact, are um, fixed point algorithms. You do and fixed point, and you see this property when it's Lifshitz, it's not only that there exists a unique fixed point, but the way to get it is you take arbitrary point, uh, say x1, and you simply hit it with f, and then you hit it again with f, and you hit it again with f, just like what we did here, and this will converge to x0 so that f of x0 is equal to x0. Some fixed points, like for example Brouwer fixed point, doesn't give you a method at all how to find it. It only guarantees the existence from kind of uh, deep, uh, kind of very general topological uh, reasons. Uh, but in cases like that, uh, what we call the uh, fixed point uh, exists and can be computed by simple iteration. And as you will see, this will be an important method for our for other um, algorithms that uh, we are going to do um, in class. 
Okay, any other questions about the page? So do yourself a favor and uh, read. Uh, the, everyone should read uh, everything except what's called, I think, extended part, or that is mathematical part. And if you are a mathematician, then it's a matter of your honor, right, to actually <laughs> read, uh, read everything because uh, I don't want to be self-aggrandizing, but I think it's one of the nicest explanations of the mathematics behind page rank that you can find. Uh, so take it as vitamins if you, are a, if you are a mathematician. Okay, but everyone should understand uh, what's behind the page rank and uh, how we use it, and I have released uh, homework number one with five problems. I'll well, it's due. Oh man, it's due when I find someone to mark it. <laughs> so uh, I'll do my best. Uh, my usual victim ran away to Switzerland for a semester, so uh, that uh, that wouldn't be it wouldn't work. And uh, the other guys, uh, you know, the our. ICPC champions, they uh, got uh, fat offers from Jane Street and uh, <laughs> told me to pack it off. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and then another guy who did well last year, uh, he also told, told me off. And uh, uh, so I have to see uh, what to do. Uh, so, um, Maybe we can introduce peer math. Voila. So peer marking is uh, oh, in this case I have a project for you. Uh, so uh, okay. So please try your best to solve the problems. Uh, all the problems can be solved with. Uh, what I told you and what's in the notes. Uh, and they are uh, designed to show you that uh, uh, other applications of the same technique, namely the page rank, right? The eigenvector trick with eigenvalue one. And uh, <coughs> Uh, so page rank has been used and abused massively. You can find uh, <coughs> about applications in computer science in about every discipline of computer science. You can find <coughs> more or less successful applications of the page rank, but it's probably the one of the most important and one of the most famous uh, algorithms uh, at the moment. Uh, Right, uh, so that's how what I wanted to tell you about page rank. Next thing that I want to tell you is something more about Markov processes, in which we are not looking for stationary distribution, but uh, we are uh, we want to kind of work on short runs of. Markov chains, and the best example for that is uh, uh, the speech recognition algorithm, uh, which, in fact, when it was first applied, and it was applied by a complete outsider of the field, uh, and he made uh, software, and then uh, uh, that was really just much better, and had a startup, and then there was some legal entanglement, and he ended up not making any money out of it, and a gazillion of people made fortunes. But this is not unusual. Very often inventors of things uh, don't make any money, because when people invent something, uh, the first reaction to any invention is, uh, uh, is uh, this is just uh, ridiculous. We don't believe you in that, right? 
Now, um, however, yeah, now Google PageRank immediately attracted attention and liked this speech recognition. What do you think? Uh, if someone worked in his garage and produced better speech recognition algorithm, and people told him off, uh, why would, uh, what was the decisive factor that uh, Google algorithm got kind of quickly accepted and recognized? Uh, because it's not nice. Maybe they didn't use it in Stanford. Yes. Uh, there you go, because they were from Stanford. But, <laughs> and I had, I had the privilege of knowing one of the best uh, logicians of the 20th century. Uh, I used to do logic when I was young and foolish. Uh, <laughs> uh, Stanley Tenenbaum, who has a very important theorem of models of arithmetic, and he used to tell me, Alex, things are not good and bad because they are good or bad, but because the Pope says so. <laughs> so you see, if you are coming from Stanford and you're on your uh, patent are uh, uh, Motvani and Vinograd, of course, uh, or was it gold? I don't remember. But uh, um, then you kind of, because people tend to trust authority more than their own judgment. <laughs> right, which is kind of totally embarrassing for us uh, as a biological species, but that's another story. Okay, so let me, uh, we have, I guess, uh, uh, 10 minutes left uh, for me to introduce you just very basic what uh, the Viterbi algorithm <coughs> attempts to do. And then next time we will see how it does it. Uh, the algorithm is a beautiful dynamic programming uh, application. And it's very similar to uh, an example that we had in uh, 3121, right? So let's quickly review that. Problem. And in fact, this is the reason why I teach that particular algorithm in 3 one to one because the trick used is essentially, it's precisely what makes the therapy algorithm work. So uh, you remember the car factory problem. So you have, <coughs> you have,